Hey, nobody fart. We'll hear it. Aaron. Hello, friends, and welcome again to another single serving tabletop adventure from Queen's Court Games. I'm Aaron, your storyteller, and tonight I'm once again joined by the fierce, fearless, and fabulous crew of the uh, crew of the owl as we play Lord Blackbird, a sky high tale of adventure in the wild blue by John Harper. As always, you can find a link to this scenario by popping exclamation point scenario in the chat or taking a peek at the show notes if you are catching up on YouTube or one of our podcasts. In the meantime, let me introduce you to our utterly wonderful cast. She's the captain in Trapton in Chagrin with the world's best chin as Cyrus Vance, our very best friend, Syrinx. Yo, what up? <clears throat> and with her at the helm, the rail thin goblin with a gold heart within as sky pilot Snargle, QCG zone Zoe. I hope you're ready for some <clears throat> really unique flying today. And let us not forget the doubled quick mechanic who's slick with a dipstick or a quick nick as chief mechanic, our royal family friend Rowan. Watch out for your valuables. I mean, you didn't hear anything from me. Of course, we cannot forget our intrepid passengers. He's the board lord who leaves them floored across the board as definitely not Lord Blackbird, the utterly wonderful Gabe. Hi, um, I'd like to consider myself a valuable. So if you could <coughs> watch me, that'd be great. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Especially um, Cyrus. Thank you. And at his side, the hard guard you can't discard, the diehard bodyguard who will leave you scarred and marred with no regard because violence is her calling card. And by the way, she loves Swiss shard as Naomi Bishop, queen of the royal court. It's V. <laughs> that was amazing. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. That was so good. Thank you. This is why I didn't get any other work done this week. I believe that wholeheartedly, yeah. You can, of course, dear audience, find their associated, sorry, their assorted social medias by putting exclamation point chat, exclamation point cast in chat. This is like the seventh time. It's, yeah. I'm going to get it wrong forever. And someone right You're now is exclamation right. point chat and feel like an idiot. It's all my fault. And I feel bad for that person. You can find their social medias by putting exclamation point cast in the chat if you're on Twitch, or you can ignore all of that. And just check the show notes if you're going elsewhere. Now, we are telling the story of Lord Blackbird in series, which means if you haven't heard the first episode, you might want to head over to YouTube or your favorite podcast app and catch yourself up. Don't worry. We'll wait. It's no rush. Just take whatever time you need. Whenever you are, um, oh, you're back. Excellent. We are glad to have you here. And with that out of the way, let us continue our tale. This is normally the part what I would do an introduction, but I have five incredibly talented storytelling role players here with me. So as is my new way, I am going to roll a dice and decide which one of us has to do the recap. Got my handy D6 out here. If I roll a six, that would point at me. I'm not going to fall for that, though. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, Gabe, my friend, tell me. us what happened last week. Well, I'm, I'm awfully glad you asked, really, because I have been meaning to put this in a journal or something, perhaps some sort of audio log. I'm not quite sure what the dumb thing is that, you know, I'm now technically a pirate. Um, anyway, hello, uh, I am uh, Lord Blackbird or um, Nathaniel, but um, for the purpose of this secret adventure, I'm Tristan. 
it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, we, me and my good friend Naomi, you see, I found myself in a bit of a spot of bother. Um, may or may not be due to um, perhaps um, really royally pissing off my family who <laughs> really don't take kindly to sort of not turning up to your own wedding. Oops. Um, so I went to find uh, Naomi, who happens to know uh, maybe a very handsome uh, sky captain who I uh, maybe, you know, sky pirate person who I maybe saved the life of, uh, like a little bit just for fun, and um, then decided to catch up with Data. Um, Naomi decided to help me with this because she's excellent, and we fled the capital. Everything was fine. We've boarded a ship called the Owl, piloted by none other than Cyrus I wow I just I mean you, you know you you meet someone sometimes and you know when you just know that there's something about them maybe it's her muscles maybe it's her nose pinching abilities I'm not sure but either way stunning and, and snuggle not to say how could I forget them they're incredible they're a tiny little goblin and um well I'd never met a goblin before I'd assumed they were made up but they seem real enough um there's also kale arkham um i'm not entirely sure why he's named after cabbage uh but um i haven't really had the chance to ask him since the last i checked he had smuggled himself away in a smuggling hole so well that we forgot he was there um anyway we kind of got boarded by uh the hand of sorrow which was a big military vessel kind of thing um turns out they were a little sus of us not having the right papers. Not great. Um, so we decided, hey, Cyrus being maybe a, a person of the, uh, the sailing the seas sort of the, you know, big hat wearing sort, swashbuckling sort, ne'er do well rogue sort, uh, maybe would not want to tangle with the law right now. For instance, when they start running our papers and realize that um, we're a little bit smugly under the hood. Um, so we decided to bust out of there with some excellent shows of strength and um, pizzazz and amazing acting, if I may say so myself, which I may, thank you. Lord Blackbird, how are you doing? Anyway, we made up to the wireless tower, we took out the communications, it was all very adventurous, and then Snargle blew up their boat, so they're probably all dead. Um, but we got away, so, you know, means and ends, it's fine. Also, uh, I may or may not drop the act um, towards the end of our uh, escapades. I, I kind of felt bad for lying to this entire crew, especially to Cyrus. So they kind of know who I am now. And hopefully we don't get arrested on the next Skyport we come across. But <laughs> life of adventure, who is to say? I, I just, I don't know. Well, I can't imagine anything going wrong henceforth, right? We had our adventure, and from here on in, it's smooth sailing. That's how games work, right? Exactly. Apologies to everyone who tuned in looking for drama. No, we're just going to essentially like play bridge for the next couple hours and tell sky stories. That's certainly what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something tells me <clears throat> maybe you're lying. Just maybe. No, you can't lie on the internet. This guy. Yeah. With the, this face. Yes, that face. What that I, very one. You're right. No, this is the face I make when I'm lying. Um, yep. Yes, there's always trouble afoot, especially because there are a couple problems you need to solve. One, uh, the owl is dangerously low on fuel. And the remnants where you are headed are A, very, very, very far away. So you're going to want to gas that baby up. And two, they're called the remnants because it's the remnants of an old uh, city island. You have to navigate through all kinds of, I don't know if you call them asteroids in this universe or not, but it's just flowing through all the brokenness and there's pirates around and all kinds of untold danger, wildlife. Ah, it's a mess. You need to find someone who can help you navigate through that place safely because despite Cyrus's many, 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 many talents, navigating the remnants is maybe like the one thing the, the, the only one thing that Captain Vansk can't do now it's not all bad news it would not be a good idea for you to go to any imperial ports but you are far away from Elysium where the Empire keeps all of its ships and from whence its power spreads out across the wild blue so 
You have many options in those dark and dangerous ports where pirates lurk or just the free spirits who don't want to live under the, the rule of their colonialist, overlord, colonialist overlords. I'm sure no one in this chat currently would understand what that's like. Now, <clears throat> you have plenty of choices. And this is a game where um, I get to hand off many of the storytelling abilities to somebody else. So, can somebody tell me the name of the place where you will be going to seek out more fuel? There's this place I know. Uh, not a great name. Uh, don't let it fool you. Uh, the Hard Goodbye. Hmm. How did it... <laughs> Go ahead. It's kind of a, a goblin town. Uh, there's people there. There's lots of different people, but it's it's kind of where we uh, come to port. Uh, so that is where we will start with Snargle trying to convince Captain Vance at all that the hard goodbye, a uh, dark and seedy goblin town, is the right place to go to find what you need. So let me get this straight. You want to go to a goblin town? Yeah, great place to hide. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> everyone's going to probably talk about the fact that we're here, but uh, who are they going to tell? They're not going to go to the Empire, right? They're, they're going to... Uh, maybe, maybe pirates. But uh, those those two people we have with us, they are, um, they're in with the pirates, so they're not going to hurt us, right? Mm, right. At least tell me this. Is the goblin town, like, far enough so that if someone were to go back to the Empire and tell them about us, at least we can already be in the remnants It's a, you know, midpoint. It's midpoint. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, we can try and run away from the hard goodbye, but I I'm going to tell you right now, nobody really goes there because um, for some reason... People wait, wait, wait. We can try to run away from the hard goodbye? Well, I mean, if the Empire shows up, right? Hopefully right. they won't. Right, hopefully they won't. Um... You're sounding very convincing, Snargle. I'm barely, I'm, I'm right there, right there to make the decision. I just need a little, a little bit more. So I'm gonna sweeten the deal. I can get more of my fermented jelly in bug paste. I was just gonna to say, make more sandwiches, the sandwiches for everyone. Aren't gonna do it this time, Snargle. They did it the last ten times. They aren't gonna do it this time. I need something new here. I have a cousin who can get us a good deal on some really cheap parts. Right, because you probably know every goblin that lives there. I don't know every goblin. I know my, my cousin, Joe. And he probably has a cousin, and they <laughs> probably have a cousin. Yeah, there's a whole line of cousins there. Uh, okay, we're not actually related, but Joe can definitely hook us up. You have a cousin? Your name is Snargle, and you have a cousin named Joe? It's short for Jorgle. <laughs> sure, that makes way more sense. Are you laughing at his name? No. Joe is nothing to laugh at, Naomi. No. Listen. I wasn't Naomi, laughing at I, Joe. I'm surprised at you. I, <laughs> I, I, thought, I of did all not, the names? Of all the people... <laughs> I did not expect you to be the kind of person who name shames. Wow. Of all the names, Joe? Not the one I was laughing at. Thank you. <laughs> well, everyone would make fun of him. It's like, oh, his, his Jurgle is, uh, he, he's jargling that, that milk again. And uh, he just started to go by Joe instead because Joe was such a better name. I Yell understand this. this. Yeah. You, if you heard it once, you heard it a thousand times. Look, at least have the decency to not laugh when we're talking to Joe. And maybe we don't bring up the jurgle thing. Uh, no. Sensitive. No, I will, um... I'll keep that just between us. So, just to clarify, jurgle is is a verb? It's like it's a, a, a do, like an actionable thing. Like you can hey. jurgle you your way through life. You don't jurgle in the shower? Sir, no. I think it just, um, 
I think that maybe, maybe we just let this question well, die. Well, and I don't. You know, have you never you know, jurgled I, before? No, I haven't. You can jurgle right more? here. Really? How? How does one go about this? You've never, you've never jurgled your own mm -hmm. balls before. <laughs> No, does that hey, involve a specific whoa, type whoa, of balls? I just, whoa. I pull out a couple, like, gold orbs from oh. my pack. <gasps> oh, shiny. I've but, never... What? And they're, they're so smooth. You must clean those often. Yeah, um... Goodness. I am a, I am a, a sucker for good, uh, <clears throat> maintenance. Right. Uh, Cyrus one leans, leans in with Snargle and goes... I think Jurgle means something else in the Empire. Maybe. Um it's it's uh it's very close to another word in goblin, which <laughs> that's the word you don't want to say. Uh oh. so well I'd like to avoid uh no I'd like to avoid cultural mishaps, you know. Um I mean I've like I said, Snuggle, I'm not entirely uh, familiar with goblin culture so you know if you could give me some pointers. I, I have been trying my best with the sandwich. I've maybe like the three quarters of the way through. Oh, you shouldn't let that sit. Oh, the eggs will start bad? to hatch. Oh, oh goodness. Well, what, what do they hatch into? Should I be worried? What? It, the, the bug jelly has eggs in it. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I'm sure they're just additional protein. Delicious. You wouldn't right. want them to hatch outside instead of inside your stomach. Oh, oh, right. Yes, that would be... How would that even work? Never mind. I'm not going into it. Okay. How does the jelly work? How does jurgling work? I I have so I'm actually questions. writing a list of questions down right now. It's, so many. It's, it's getting pretty long. I think I think the post game for this is going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm. I might defer entirely to chat uh, as to what they think jurgle means, and that will become my canon, which I will then enforce upon all of you with my storyteller powers. Don't sure. unleash that yeah. evil onto the world. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Captain, are you are you convinced you can get some more bug jelly? You can get a good jurgle in. You can kind of find some fuel. Uh, is that reason enough to go to the hard goodbye? I actually didn't really need that much convincing. It's just always nice to hear Snuggle come up with something else. Uh, we're going to the hard goodbye and getting some new parts and hopefully getting someone who can lead us through the remnants. Sounds like a good idea. Great. That sounds well, great. All that needs to happen then is you rig up the ship for a nice long trip. Away you go. So we've already, you know, when you were escaping the Hand of Sorrow, you had to get all the engines pulled up and things like that. But long distance travel it requires a kind of different vibe. So uh, Snargle, you have some piloting to do, yes. Uh, Cyrus, you have some captaining to do, yes. But you are short one mechanic which means you're going to need some spare hands to go make sure the, the knobs are knobbed and the levers are levered and the gauges are gauged. Can you explain how to do that to one of your passengers? Do you have to take on two different roles while you're getting things moving? How does this play out? Well, I want more than happy to help. You know, whatever you need, just... Say. Well, then, I mean, I guess at that point it would uh, make sense that Tristan is. Um, you could Im impress upon either Snargle or Cyrus your desire to contribute, and <laughs> dare I say, be taught in a very private corner of the ship right. how this various machinery works. Uh, yes, of course. Um, I will make my way over to Cyrus. Um, and sort of say, um, you know. Despite the fact that the Academy had all sorts of interesting machinery and goodness knows what else, all sorts of arcane implements, these sorts of skyships always confounded me somewhat. I could never get to grips with the construction, something about the engines. Would you be um, kind enough to sort of show me the ropes on how you keep this thing afloat and maybe you could um, let me help a little bit? Well, I'd be more than willing to uh, show you around the ship uh, and teach you a few things. Although if you really want to get into the, the maneuvering and the flying, I'm afraid that Snargle will have to help you, but with most other things, I can at least teach you the basics. Fantastic. Start from the top then. How about we head to the engine room? Sure. 
lead the way. Sounds like you're starting from the bottom. <clears throat> now we're here. Isn't that great? Do you know how skyships work, Naomi? I mean... Are you a captain of one? No, I'm not. Mm. I will have you know that Cyrus knows this ship from top to Nathaniel. Every single inch of it. Yep. It's a fair call out, <laughs> but still <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Up. It's a good joke. It's a great joke. Just even. dropping that like that. <laughs> uh, back into the the sweaty, steamy innards of this steampunk vessel, where uh, any space that is not occupied by some kind of spiraling mess of, of copper tubing or large, uh, like you know, one of those uh, big, like steam fitted, riveted together pipes, uh, the parts that are occupy occupied by things like that have chains you can pull and levers and big gauges that spin around and I, I don't know how any of it works so basically this ship uh, used to be a haul or a cargo ship but we we tampered with it a bit when I say we I mean me and my crew and then when Snargle came in and actually started changing parts for the best of two weeks until I noticed uh, they really helped improve the ship. Uh, although it's it's not the the fastest one, uh, it's definitely got some nifty tricks. Uh, we have a short range sonar, uh, but that's not down here. I could show you that uh, up in the uh, well, however you would call. Uh, <laughs> hold up. Um, however you would call the room where I sit as a captain. Um, which I obviously know the name to. Uh. I assume it's a closely guarded <clears throat> secret. <You probably clears throat> giving away that where the captain is. That's a, the that's Nathaniel yeah. pit. It's a, tra <laughs> it's a trade Hopefully. secret, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Spacer's Guild has lots of things to say about, oh. about that. Exactly, exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, to be fair, you can now have all the fancy little new ships, but... Why would you want that when this baby has been flying for years now and there's lots of stories in her? And I kind of slap the side a bit of like one of the uh, the <laughs> engine machines. Um, you hear a very loud swear word as you slam your hand into the, the metal from like the other side of it. That is not supposed to happen. <laughs> I didn't this think you meant that so literally. <laughs> um... I will uh, tap it again. Uh... <laughs> Can you keep it down? Dude. Mm. Kale. Yeah? Why the... Why are you hiding in the engine room? Why are you in the engine room? Why weren't you in prison with us? Why were you in prison? Have we got... Can, Can you get me out? Oh, you're stuck. Yes! At what, were you trying to steal something again? Like a no. motor part? No. There's a thief on board? <laughs> Look, Nathaniel, if there's one thing you need to learn is that probably every single person in this ship is sort of kind of a thief. Um, right. But don't worry about it. Nothing will get stolen from you. Not got much and then there's like... Anyway. There's like a small pause where I look up and down <laughs> as I say... Nothing will get stolen from you. Oh. <laughs> um, all right then, Kale. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, and I'll try to see if I can get him out. Kale, uh, how tightly are you wedged into this contraption? I think there's a there's like a panel into kind of a, a compartment that was once an engine compartment that's now been kind of gutted because we don't need it, and the door has just become stuck. And it can be opened from the outside, but not the inside, basically. So with a little bit of a masculine determination, Cyrus, you can smash that thing open. Uh, I do so with the compartment. grace. I and... want to specify. Oh, absolutely. I do so with grace and uh, showing off my best side. And then like a, uh, a, a filthy, greasy, hidden jack-in-the-box. Mm -hmm. Pop! Out comes Kale. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mr. Arkham, nice to see you. Yeah, he is a um, a very tall, like gangly, kind of built like a baby deer uh, young man. 
got kind of like a five o'clock shadow covered in soot and engine grease, uh, messy hair, shirt, like, again, looks like it's seen better days, uh, rolled up to the, to the elbows, sleeve tattoos, um, kind of like sticks his head out of this compartment, gives a nod to Cyrus, looks to this other man in the, in the engine room, narrows his eyes and just goes, Lord Nathaniel Blackburn. Oh, fuck. Oh, hi. Um, wow. What? Are you I, psychic, Hill? Just kind of like go. Have we met? One moment. What the fuck? I'll be here. Just. Yeah. You know, if you talk like this, they can still hear us. I, oh, no, I'll pretend not to. Don't worry. Well, that's nice of you. You're welcome. Hmm? What? Since when was this the plan? We were just about- Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't know, actually. I didn't- Look, I didn't know we were going to be smuggling a lord. Right. Since if, you, if you would have recognized him earlier, if you wouldn't have been stuck in an engine, you could have recognized him and told us or something. Yeah, touche. Right. Take responsibility. Fine. Sure. Fuck it. Okay. This is gonna cause us problems, isn't it? What? Not okay. Look, not not no more offense. than we usually no get offense. in. Right. We we don't have to be whispering. Look, yeah. this is not gonna get us into more trouble than anything else we've ever done before. Heck, us running a skyship is putting us in, in as much trouble as we can with the Empire. My. Uh, <laughs> me existing at this moment is causing a lot of problems to the mm. Empire. I'm sure that smuggling our lord to another place isn't gonna put us in more danger than usual. Are you, are you hiding the fact that you were captured by the Empire and had to fight a way out? Or are you just like leaving all of that unspoken? I think so. I mean, you told me you were in prison. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were in prison. Um, yeah, but it's no biggie. We got out. The Empire may have seen us, but they're probably all Fuck dead sake. because Snargle <sighs> blew up their engine, so... It was right. brief, okay? I don't okay. know who you are, but it's... It, listen, right. we handled it, okay? Okay, yes, um, I'll kind we of... Stop, we stopped their intercoms with the Friends intro song. I mean, that's a pretty successful mission, if that's, you ask me. I'll give you that. That sounds pretty good. I'll kind of hop out of the engine and stand up and like it's very like gangly tall tall young tall young man stands up and no, looks to you and his my apologies lord lord are you lord here uh, well, nathaniel please uh sure uh kale arkham first mate mechanic at your service i'd <laughs> great um do we know each other no Right. Kale has those kinds of faces, you know, they... Yeah. Everyone just thinks they know them. Right, uh -huh. Kale? Yeah. We've, ne we've never met. No, I'm sure we haven't. Definitely. You've mm. probably met his brother before. Yeah. Right. Hale. Yeah. Hale. Yeah. Hale. Hale. Same Arkham. hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Terrible man. Not really? me. Mm. Oh, scoundrel. Mm. Awful. Sure. I just want to make, make clear that Met is not the past tense of meat, if that's what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm watching, I'm watching that joke bounce off some people, but it'll get there. You'll simmer <laughs> on it. I'm busy being suspicious, storyteller. Mm -hmm. Give me a mm -hmm. oh, my, my mistake. I'll get out of the way. No, look. Right. Well, Kale, I'm sure that Snargles has a lot to talk about because we're yep. going to get the ship ready for a longer trip. And I was showing our dear Nathaniel here around. Yeah, right. But why are you in the engine room? I, I, The engine room's my place. I'm the engineer. And I'm the captain of the ship. And I can enter the engine room. Yeah, I know. <sighs> but, uh, leave. Thank you, Kale. Uh. Wow. Don't worry about that. That's the last person of the crew you had to meet. Now you've met them all. It's kind of like meeting the family. 
right. kind of rough for the first time always, right? I see. Well, he seems perfectly charming. I'm sure we'll get along just fine. Hmm, well, luckily, the more charming one between the two of you is you, so if you think he's charming, then, well, I'm sure you're good. Oh, Captain, <laughs> you are truly too kind. <laughs> um, you are um, telling me some stories, though, I believe. Now, well, as that proceeds, there's another half of the ship where mischief might be managed because Snargle has been left alone with Naomi, or Naomi has been left alone with Snargle, and I... There is no universe in which this does not turn into something interesting. So what is going on at the front of the ship? I have an idea. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I put the ship into autopilot and I've been kind of like sizing up Naomi. Like, so the punching, tell, tell me about it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I punch things and they break. It's, I don't know. It's, I, I got, <clears throat> I had to get really good at it. Um, it was kind of one of those like <laughs> life or death situations, you know, as you do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And <clears throat> well, really it was, it was punch or be punched. Right. Uh, so I just got really good at punching um, because I, I don't like being punched. So I just decided to nip that as quick as I could. So um, yeah, it just turned out that I'm really, really good at punching and things don't tend to stay together often when I punch them. I'm not really so great at the punching thing. And at this point I'll like uh, retract some claws and show you my sharp teeth. And some goblin's really good at scratching and biting. But um, mm -mm, I, like, I like how you break things. So, um, Thanks. Uh, one thing about goblins, uh, allergic to punches, oh. but, but okay. can you show me what you can do on, uh, other things around the ship? Like, uh, ooh, uh, if I was to take this vase and I, I pull like, um, something that might be worth a lot of money, might not be, might just be junk out of a box and be like, if I throw this at you, can oh, you yeah. punch it and, and mm -hmm. can, can it shatter? Yeah, that's easy. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. <laughs> At this point, I will grow larger so I can kind of have more of a pitching arm and I'm going to like stand stand over there just a little okay. bit more. All right, let's go. All right, and I'm going to whip this vase at uh, Naomi just to see if she can shatter it in one punch. Oh, it's it's cake. It's cake. It's, I mean, it's just a, it's just a fucking straight left jab, just straight, nice, nice and fast. And as soon as it hits my fist, it just like the, the area of impact turns into like a ceramic dust as it flies out. And then it kind of ripples through the vase and the rest of the vase kind of like shatters into pieces. And it's actually really cool because uh, if, if, if it was a blood splatter and I was standing up against a wall, you would just see this really cool outline behind me where all the dust and the fragments have kind of like passed around me. And I'm completely safe, which is really weird because this is ceramic and I probably shouldn't be safe, but I am. It's really weird and really cool. We've expressed in the past that uh, canonically every single kind of punch has a sound effect. Which one is the vase punching sound effect? Uh, the, well, <laughs> the, the, this one isn't waboosh because it's it's a smaller object, right? So this right. is a this is a ksha. That's the ooh. Sound is that okay? Is that a subgenre of kapow or is it distinct? Yes, yes, it, it's a subgenre of kapow. It's it's not like a full force kapow because it doesn't have to be because it's a smaller object. So kapush is is uh, like. It's just, it's it's for smaller things. Phylum, punching, class, ka, and then there's mm -hmm. kapow, and there's kasha. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. write that down real quick too. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. Great. So as this vase explodes, uh, I begin shrinking back to my regular shape and then smaller, but my eyes are getting larger. And if this was a slightly different universe, you'd see the hearts starting to come up off of my head. And I'm just like, <clears throat> Wow. Do you You're so amazing? Do you have more things? I can punch more things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's punch more things. Uh, let me uh, let me go searching. I'm going to find the really fun stuff to punch. 
and I'm stirring about in this uh, this room, just kind of looking for maybe expensive things, maybe not. Uh, things to huck at Naomi and see if she can demolish them or not. Well, the ship isn't that big. The, the owl is only about 50 meters nose to tail. So I, it will take some time, time enough for you to break top five favorite things uh, with Naomi. But that's about as long as it'll take for the conversation in the engine room to wrap up, which means when you're getting to the sixth or the seventh or the eighth thing on your list, depending on how long you spend letting your heart rate return to normal every time that Naomi punches, uh, that is when, if she so chooses, Cyrus uh, and Tristan, there's, that's when they might be creeping back to the middle of the ship. So what, Snargle, Naomi, what do the two of them, and Kale, if you're deciding to join people on the bridge at that point, what do they hear when they're about halfway? Hmm. Uh, it's, <clears throat> uh, Snargle has found this really cool, like, um, old, like, like not not like a chest but um kind of like a jewelry box i guess and they've had trouble uh snargle told me uh they've had trouble opening the lock on this one it's just been giving them a lot of trouble but the box was really nice so cyrus didn't want to just like tear it open uh because you know she wanted to hold on to it for later um but you know what uh snargle uh, explained to me that uh, a closed box is a useless box so it'd be better to have it open uh so as people are getting close what they'll hear is the sound of this wooden box cracking as my fist basically punches straight through the bottom of this jewelry box and all of the little contents whatever it was inside of it uh sh like kind of clatter to the ground uh, and, and hit the wall and, and bounce off of things behind me. I like the idea that all of that happens, but you've also punched straight through it. So when your fist returns, there's like a nice bangle on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like like the metal the metal framing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. or, or literally just one of the bangles in the box. Just one whatever. of the bangles in the box. Yeah. <laughs> just like a bra you have a bracelet now. And like, you, it's like, where the fuck did that? Oh, I mean, it makes sense in context, but that's mm -hmm. still quite surprising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Captain. Followed Oh. Oh, sorry, uh, but no, you, I I want you two to make this as terrible as possible for us yes. if shows up, so please go on. Followed by this smashing sound comes, like, the the most pathetic, like, goblin whimpering sound you've ever heard. Um, to someone on the outside, it might be, like, alarm, right? But this is just, like, oh, <laughs> she's so good. Kale is stood up against the kind of side of the ship just with his arms crossed just kind of watching not got any particular thing of trying to stop them but kind of sees cyrus come in and is like i i tried i tried i'm sorry once once i hear the uh, wood breaking and i hear a little goblin whimpering i'm like fuck i left snargle alone i do you, uh, Kale or Cyrus, do you recognize that box? Yeah, oh, I do. No. Well, not anymore, you don't. <laughs> and well, I, I recognize the remnants and the jewelry that's now lying on the floor that we got from the Dokarian, uh lady mm -mm. that we so mm. valiantly saved mm. and we got her box of jewelry as a thanks. Yeah. A lot of sentimental value in that box. Yeah, that was a good one. <sighs> good memories of that box. Yeah. Um, I, uh, step closer and I, uh, I say, um, I am missing a joke here. <laughs> it's, I'm obsessed. I'm just, just go on. <laughs> so mad. <laughs> um, I, uh, take up one of the, like, maybe emerald necklaces or something that was in there that's now on the ground. And I say, Next time you go punching stuff, at least doing it in, I don't know, the, the room where we keep the trash. There's two nice bags here. You could just take that. You don't need to smash things we got from people we did stuff for. I mean, I'm not at least smashing things. I was having fun with Snargle. I'm so yeah, sorry, was... Captain. I, I'm, I... I had to. I realized I'm a big, strong lady sexual. 
Uh, I oh. I quickly lean down, like as he's saying that, I I don't even mind. I quickly lean down and I'm like, you like the girl, don't you? Uh huh. I keep impressing her and I uh, <laughs> come back up with the necklace um, I will now make a canon that Nathaniel has emerald green eyes uh, because I will hold up the necklace and say they glitter in the light of the well space outside just like your eyes so I think you should hold on to this I will take good care of them I promise much less um, punching from me so relieved that Captain is my wingman in this. Very open-minded, this crew. I love it. It's so, so positive. So, yeah, no questions. Captain, mm -hmm. Captain loves a little story. And what's not the love between possibly a hookup between uh, both parties? Oh, I, mean, I see. Get, that's that's what you're getting. Captain game. can that's get the game. some. Snargle can also get some. Mm -hmm. Oh, I figured it was more like if... If Snargle gets some with Naomi, then maybe Naomi will no. let Captain get some. <laughs> Look, Captain <laughs> isn't Blackbird. that... No. If Captain deserves to get something on, then Snargle also deserves it. And he's clearly enamored with Naomi, so good for him. Kale's only love is crime. <laughs> <laughs> that much is clear. In certain yeah. parts of the Empire, the things that these people have planned are crimes. Mm. What did we say last session? Uh, Kale is the fourth wheel in the car? Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, he, he doesn't care. You guys, you guys go bang or go bang whoever you want. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the, uh, on the topic of bang on, let us bang on <laughs> towards the hard goodbye. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> oh man, this is the uh, subtitle uh, of my college of memoirs. Uh, the entirety of the Blue Yonder is about six weeks average travel speed end to end, which means you will have, I mean, close to like a day and a half or two days of, of just puttering through the big gigantic skies before you <clears throat> would arrive um, at this location. But uh, and nothing's ever that easy in the wild blue. There are no quiet moments. There's there's no time when you can really let your guard down because God knows at any moment, hypothetically, when something might happen. So we will say it is later in the evening. The sun doesn't ever set here, but it does kind of wobble on its axis. So you get a little bit of brighter, a little bit of darker, and your circadian rhythm would say that it is time for bed. Who is taking not the first watch, not the third watch, but the second watch at the helm? Can yoink that one. Then, Mr. Arkham, you are seated in the captain's chair, watching all the gauges from the front, seeing to seeing to fit that um Snargle's autopilot contraption does not break down. Yeah, I trust Snargle. It's good. They when, do good work. Through the, the mist that kind of floats so there, there's a very of course toxic underbelly to this entire sky sea but above it there's the roiling currents of mists and sometimes a little pocket of the the gross beneath will spool up sometimes some you know cold hot air whatever it's, it's it's weather or it's magic who knows but in that mist you see just the little arch and valley and arch of a tendril that oh, waves shit. just past view in the darkness Shit. Um, I'm gonna not make a loud noise while I do this, but I'm going to quietly and quickly wake the captain. Fog kill. Yeah. Something out there. There's always something out there. Big, uh, big moving towards we're us. We're a small ship. There's always something out there. Be more specific. And I'll kind of like hold her shoulders and like point her like out in the direction of what I saw. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, even if you didn't see it, you hear the drag, the, the, the sound of, I mean, imagine someone ringing the ship like a gong as this muscly, thick tentacle just slams across the side of it. Bam! <clears throat> God. <clears throat> 
And you feel right, the entire Stargo. ship tilts to the left, is shaking along. If it were Star Trek, everyone would do it like this in their chairs. Mm, you're ready. Everyone up. Everyone up. <clears throat> Shoot out of bed saying, she's punching the ship. <laughs> <laughs> That's wishful thinking, nope. dear. Not dealing with that. We're <clears throat> dealing with a sky squid. Oh, 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 shit. Um, nice, I'm I scurry ring, out of bed. I, I ring the the bell that hangs on the mast that is our designated sky squid bell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Never punched a sky squid before. Yeah, it's first time for everything. The sticky. Naomi, what's a sky squid? It's a squid in space. Why? Why do they have those? <laughs> Why not? Uh, Where else would you have them? Why? Don't be you, facetious. Oh, well, tell me, you took sky biology when you were in big, fancy noble person college. So I, you slept through the lesson from last time they talked about. Uh, and then you also were apparently sleeping, sleeping through sky fauna identification class. Well, Look, it, when mommy and daddy pay for your education, you can sleep through classes and have no problem at all. I don't know, the gentleman's see. Yeah, it, it would have been a lot better if I'd actually just missed the class. What's worse is that... Well, never mind. That's a story for another time. Don't worry. I've heard he snores terribly. Well, Mm -hmm. that is incredibly rude. First of all, that's the professor, not me. Second of all, bam! Other side of the ship, (laughs) tentacle wrapping, and now you you realize you're not being battered around because the first one hits and like you felt everything shake to the side, and now the second one's there, but then you hear that creaking sound. Like, you ever yeah, watch nope. like a submarine movie nope. when they start mm-hmm. to go really low and it's that mm-hmm. like yeah of metal. Uh oh no! Someone's taking to home. Uh someone's getting up there to shoot. <clears throat> and from your perch in the in the uh, anyone who passes into the front of the. Of the captain's chair, like looking at that front window, can see what's going on. Um, Nathaniel, this will, be, this will be traumatizing for you because your first vision of a sky squid is not this gigantic, uh, majestic creature from afar, but a snapping, kraken like maw closing towards the front of the ship while the tentacly appendages around rip and twist and tie themselves around the owl to pull it forward into the mall, like a loving embrace that ends in a sharp bird-like beak. I don't know. Uh, da, 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 um... It's the stuff of Yonic nightmares. Yeah, that's... Mm, yeah. Great. Um, Kale and... arms, what are we doing? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, someone is going to fly and make a loop-de-loop so that we can m- not fly into his mouth. Um, and someone else is going to go up there and shoot. Snoggle, you got the flying? Yes, I- I'm making my way there right now, and I'm you got hurrying. That- I will tell you that the, the the squid is a squid. It's got suction tentacles, and you're wrapped up. So mm-hmm. you can you can fly against it, but it's got a hold on you. Uh, not quite like a Naomi hug, but like 72% mm-hmm. power level of Naomi hug is this squid around the ship. Mm-hmm. I can still kind of like steer away from the beak as much as I can until it like completely envelops us. Well, let us see the answer to that question once you put together a roll as Scar or as Snargle uh, takes control. In the meantime, uh, Cyrus, you have ordered someone to the turret. Do you have someone in mind? Mm-mm-mm. Um. I could do it unless uh, Naomi feels that uh, besides punching, she's also very good at shooting, um, which I maybe doubt. So I will go test my skills up there, um, assuming everyone could still hear me when I uh, call out orders from out there. Uh, yes, it's actually um, a wonderful technology, the sound-powered phone that exists in real life and that uses the vibration of the microphone bouncing up and down in its cage to generate the electric current that powers the signal. U.S. Coast Guard oh. regulation makes them mandatory in all U.S. civil nautical craft. Mm. Uh, so then I will go up there and uh, try to shoot through uh, the tentacles so that we may get loose that way. Mm-hmm. Kale, Tristan, and Naomi. There are two stations taken, but plenty still to do. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, I think as Cyrus is running for the turrets, I kind of run past her and fall in step. And I'm like, okay, uh, fire, fire, good. Yes, fire, good against big mouth things with what's it? I was going to say, Tristan, I showed you the engine room before. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe if we can heat up something, then they don't want to touch us anymore. On it. Um, Do you have a way of making fire quickly? Do you have like maybe a flint flint and steel handy? Kale surely has it. Great, I run past Kale. Kale, fire making. You have it? Um, Give. You can see uh, Kale, what Kale does is like, when you say fire making quickly, is he claps his hands together, pulls them apart, and there is a ball of fire floating between his hands. That is, is exceptionally dangerous to do in a yeah. room choked with industrial fumes. So why don't you also make a roll for me I to see how that, that goes? Uh, Snargle, I believe you have assembled your pool. How many dice did you end up with? Uh, I ended up with nine dice. I spent three from my pool. Uh, the rest were skills. My idea was to um, basically hit the thrusters and pull away from it while also uh, kind of corkscrewing. So it wraps up its own tentacles and uh, we hopefully draw ourselves away from the maw as much as co- possible until the rest of the team figures out ways to deal with it. Like a, a scarf getting stuck in a ceiling fan. Yeah. It's- just well, trying to draw ourselves out of a web. Yeah, I will say that um, I, four successes that you rolled is excellent. Um, I will take your efforts and then also the mechanical efforts coming out of the engine room. Uh, so it's the combination of piloting skill and raw power and firepower. And if all of that goes perfectly, you might escape. And if it doesn't go perfectly, things will be worse. On the topic of things being worse, Mr. Arkham, what uh, traits and tags did you pick to go with? Uh, I picked, uh, so I have, I can only pick one of my spell tags at once, uh, so for which I picked light, because that feels the most appropriate. Uh, where have I got? My, my uh, sheet is taking ages to load. Uh, so petty magic is light spell. Uh, I picked escape uh, as well, uh, and then uh, engines, and then I used one from my pool for four. <clears throat> I think you would probably also, uh, well, for one, uh, take mechanic as well because, oh, of course, you, you, yeah, you get these the big capital ones. Um, oh, and that is right. Yeah, Kale is a petty sorcerer, so they I can am. only do one. Um, well, roll that one extra dice uh, that you got there, and nope, uh, <laughs> not so much. <clears throat> well, uh, the the problem is not yours. It is not your fault. You've done this a hundred times before, and you know exactly how to use our magic. The problem is that there's a giant fucking squid trying to eat the ship and his twisted mm-hmm. things around. So as you do this, as you go to make the fire and it starts, there's a spark of something that lights up. There's a, a jet of some kind of chemical. God only knows how the inside of these things work. That goes roaring off. I will let you decide, Mr. Arkham, just between mm-hmm. you and me, totally out of character. Will you recognize this happens and take the injury for yourself by pushing Tristan out of the way? Or do you allow Lord Blackbird to become Black Blur- Bur- Lord Blackburn? There it is. <laughs> Got there eventually. Uh, uh, I wasted yeah, all I... of my fluency at the <laughs> beginning of the show. <laughs> Uh, I will I will see it and take it for myself. <clears throat> All right. So you will take the condition injured. You can check that little box off on your sheet as you take a series of burns. On the right side, uh, Lord Blackbird, plenty of fire now. You got fire fucking everywhere. All the fire you can want. Oh. Well, um, good show. Yep. Do it. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I will... Uh, clap my hands together and try and scoop all of this fire into a sort of a swirling whirlwind um, of arcane fury. Um, And then I will stride towards the squid and say, well, with that many legs, you'd hope that you'd run away faster, but here we go. (laughs) Um, And I'm just going to try and um, essentially fireball this thing in the throat. (laughs) How how do you intend to do that? Uh, Because you can see the picture of the owl. It's it's a closed ship. There's not Oh, no, you're right. That I can see. I mean, I'm more than willing to let you do that if you'd like yeah. to go outside the ship. I'm assuming there's a bad... There's a bad air? This is, I'm assuming there's bad air out there. 
Uh, you're in the middle air. It's not the, the good air that's up top. Okay. It's, not, it's not the bad air that's on the bottom. It's you not like it. you stick your head out the ship and die air. No, that's <laughs> that's that, that's definitely below you. Do not okay. do that like a 100, 200 feet down. Definitely don't want to be outside. But cool. up here, not the um, worst thing. In that case, I think like with the fire still sort of swirling around and trying to keep it contained, very, very um Doctor Strange style of like compressing... Mm-hmm the matter of this giant fire tornado into a tiny ball in my hands. I just look at Kale, look at one of the hatches in the ceiling, and I'm like, give me a leg up. Oh, shit. And I, like, push myself up to to one knee, and as best I can, I will, like, give him him a leg up. Cool. Uh, So I've I've sort of drawn an arrow on the sheet. That is about where, well, that's too far back. We'll say the engine room is, like, control Z a couple times. So that doesn't do that. So the engine room is right about there on that definitely real arrow and not the one that I am crossing out. So that's about where you come out on the ship in the center, uh, just behind the main, um, what would you call that uh, protrusion? I would call it a bulge, but not with you five. Uh, Behind where the turret is. So we will put you there for just a moment because what I think is going to be hilarious is that you are going to launch your fireball either immediately before or after Cyrus goes shooting. It'll be one of those moments where uh, uh, at the end of Saving Private Ryan, slightly more comical, where he's using the pistol to blow up the tank. So, uh, Captain, would you be so kind as to give me a roll for your turret? And actually tell us what you picked out of your um, skills and your tags and traits list. Uh, Yes. Um... I uh, do. I have to go over all of them. No, just uh, the gist of it. I uh, well, I'm basically because I am an ex-imperial soldier. I have a few good things with tactics, and I'm following my own command here, which is sort of strange. I told someone to go up there and shoot, and I am doing it. <laughs> that's a little, so there's that's a, a little meta, but okay. <laughs> there's a first thing for everything. Um, and I am also a survivor and a warrior. I know my way around guns, uh, all kinds of guns. And I used two dice from my pool as well to add it up to come to a total of nine um, with my trades. Um, and when I roll, I got three successes. Three is a perfectly acceptable amount. Uh, as you whip this turret around and, and start unloading shells into the squid, what are you trying to accomplish? Where are you aiming? Uh, trying to uh, possibly sever a tentacle by shooting like a straight line um, across one. All right. Um, a three is not going to be enough to sever it on its entirety, but you'll be making progress in that direction. Lord Blackbird, you are on the back of the ship, and in fact, uh, you might regret this as you realize there's no safety rail up here. You're totally on your own. You're standing on the back of the ship. The ship's being torn left and right. It's very wobbly. Uh, if it were a movie set, there'd be entire teams of people shaking the thing up and down with the bars on the bottom of it. And you're holding a fireball like a lovely, swollen, orange, hot baby. This, what comes next? This is the life of adventure. It's fine. Everything's fine. I've got it perfectly under control. Um, I am going to uh, climb haphazardly, trying to be graceful about it, but there's absolutely no way it's graceful. Um, up through the haphazardly made hatch, just sort of elbow my way through, um, get an elbow up and just say, well, time to shoot my shot. Um, and I'm going to just hock the basketball of mm-hmm. an orb of fire at the thing's mouth. Um, the, the size you're holding tells me you have no idea what a basketball actually no, is. Uh, no. <laughs> and, um, frankly, I thought it was a myth until about a week ago when um, Snuggle informed me that that is in fact uh, How not, it works. not mm-hmm. just you know some a vague concept that people talk about for fun. No. Well, um, what does your sorcery that. pool look like, good sir? It looks like a solid nine, which is great. Um, mm-hmm. Thanks to being a, a master sorcerer. Sorry, Kale. It's in the blood. You'd understand if yeah. you were, you know, of just better stock. It's not his fault. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't write the game. You're making that face. Go talk to John Harper. <laughs> <laughs> that is a three. All right. Um, well, uh, given how this has gone, um, engine power having to get it under control the turn the time that Kale would have spent giving you like oh she's got Scotty uh, he has instead had to use that time to uh, 
control the, the fire and get the small damage under control. Snoggle's doing a better than average job uh, keeping the ship from being just totally snapped at, and Cyrus is doing their 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 damnedest, their their good honest effort uh, to shoot. So you can help one of them accomplish their goal. Would you like to make it easier for Snargle to keep the ship from being snapped off at the front, or would you help, like to rather help Cyrus? get you out of the crutch clutches of this creature are you asking me uh, i'm asking um tristan with the fireball oh we'll come to you in a moment um i do apologize um i believe i will um probably be helping with uh so cyrus is currently aiming at the tentacle correct mm-hmm you have um, three sets of problems you're trying to solve. Mm-hmm. One, squid has it wrapped up, right? So we'll call that like the tentacles is problem A. Problem A. Two, the squid is trying to consume the ship. That's problem two. They're not. They're actually not like rank ordered and important. It's just you know a, a, an idea chart. Um, so as long as Snarl can keep flying correctly and stops the uh, the sky squid from snapping up from the ship, fine. So tentacles, problem one, snapping, problem two, and then um, we'll call like engine escape three. Right. And you will have to solve all three of these problems concurrently for you to escape the uh, the tentacle creature. Fantastic. Um, so, in that case, yeah, I am helping with the um, stop with the sharp beak on the chip. Stop it. Root. And, uh, um, how would someone with a fireball to fling accomplish that um so essentially what i am aiming for is to um get it directly in the mouth so that it just has the worst case of heartburn it has ever had in its tiny little cephalopodic <clears throat> life, mm-hmm. which is in fact quite big because it's a large cephalopod but still point stands heartburn well with a three that is probably not enough to get it right down the throat uh either by a lack of aim or a lack of timing uh so uh, yeah you you hurl the fireball and right as this happens the squid's mouth snaps shut and snargle has just turned the ship to the right and you see the fireball it's gonna make it it's gonna make it and then the jaws snap and the fireball bursts on the side of the of the uh the creature's beak but that probably hurts like a motherfucker because no one likes fire on their face i'm assuming if you do i'm sorry no kink shaming but then it reels back in pain and that's going to make it easier for snargle on the next maneuver to possibly escape now naomi all of this is happening and as the uh i am not going to say the fister sister because that leads to a different place it started as the sister fister which is not at all what i was going for i'm going to give up on the rhyming now as the lady who fist no that's not it <laughs> it's getting worse it's, it's getting worse yeah, it's honestly it's, <clears throat> do i just like now, take a minute we'll just like take no, a break early that's fine no like, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm 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 gonna pass to you actually mm. don't Would worry you... about it fist or sister <laughs> <laughs> do not no uh well we know you're not a mr fister uh what would you like to do how do you intend to contribute to I'd like this. to get off of the ship if this is how it's going to continue. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, there are so many options. I mean, among them, you can punch the squid. I'm not sure quite how we get there, but I mean, why the fuck wouldn't you want to punch oh, the squid, right? Oh, I haven't punched a sky squid before. Ever? If you th- No, never. Oh my god, you have to I, try it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So as everybody's kind of like getting into position, uh, now that this squid has kind of wrapped its little tentacles around the ship, um, I am actually running towards where the little, I don't know, the little, the little endy bits of the, of the, of the, of the arms are the little, because they're not, they're not hands. I don't know what you'd call them. Um, squid hands, squid fingers, <laughs> squid fingers. Squingers. Squand? Squand? Are you going for the squand or the squingers? I'm going for the squingers. The squingers, okay. Because, baby. Oh, God. 
Uh, but uh, I'm looking for a hatch that, or like a, you know, just like a, some sort of, of porthole or something that I can uh, open up uh, that is close to the squingers uh, so I can try and punch the squingers and get the squid to let go from there because that has like I mean obviously the whole tentacle is a problem but the squingers has a like there's a there's a really big like surface area mm-hmm. of suction cups on the squingers <laughs> so oh, you know I, I definitely lose it Definitely um, learned that in squid school. I hate yeah. that. W- I hate the word. I can't do it. Fingers? I hate it. What shadow will jurgle with his swingers? Yeah, yeah. No, this is this is what jurgling is right now. What what the what the swingers are doing to this ship? It's, that's that's it's jurgling. jurgling. Oh, oh my god, god. it's swingers yeah. all the way down. Swingers all the way down, baby. And then up, and then down, and then up. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, yeah. Or small circles. Depends. Yeah. It sounds like. <laughs> We're writing some goblin fanfic right now. I hate this. Well, I will ask one question of you as we go. So, first mm-hmm. of all, um, love the idea, right? But there is a there's a relationship between um, risk and reward. So, if you're just going to go through a porthole and like start grabbing the first thing you can find, the difficulty will be lower, but the effect will be lessened. On the alternative, if you were to put yourself in greater danger by going outside and really being able to uh, to properly uh, all the verbs coming to mind very offensive not saying them uh, the, uh, the the place that I'm looking for uh, the, the opening <laughs> in the ship that I can I can get through um, mm-hmm. it, it is to put myself in the best position I, I just don't want to be traversing the outside of the ship um, well, from, that, that's, from one yeah. end to the other right uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find a hole that I can get out of but that it puts me as close to the swingers as possible so I'm like not you have your any kind of direction you look. There's swingers. Like okay, great. There's there's no way you're not gonna see them. It's like trying to find a cowboy hat at a mud rally. Like no matter where you look. Great. So, um, top of the ship, good way to go. Uh, gravity still works in this universe. So if you've got the bottom, it's gonna be a long way down. I mean, not that yep. long. You'll you'll die soon. I'll die but, soon. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and I mean, not for nothing. So you're gonna you you can head out the top of the ship. You're not going out to the engine room because it's not where you are, but you can leave. I will draw on the map for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, just ahead of the turret is this other hatch. So uh, kind of just behind where Cyrus is chaired in the cabin, you can hop out there, which means if you play your cards right and you time things correctly, uh, after the fireball goes, you and Tristan can have a good little Spider-Man mean moment where you realize that you're both outside. And then will you prepare for me a fisting roll? Only if you never call it that again. I can't make that promise. How many swingers make a fist? What is the study of cephalopods? It's not cephalopodology, but there's got to be like an, a formal word for the... Um, anyway, whatever that word is, I'm not one of those, but depending on how long it takes me to collect this pool, I will go find out what uh, how many squingers a squid a squand has. Tathology? The study of you, cephalopods is a branch of malacol. I'm so stop sorry. Stop googling. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I had to know. I had to know. I did not. I did. It was not important enough to look up what the fuck a squinger actually is called. But what the study of cephalopods is? Oh, that was that was a brain buzz that was not going to leave anytime soon. Oh, the mm-hmm. answer varies tremendously between individual species. What squingers? Yeah. Oh. The Onyka Ingens, I'm not saying that correctly, has uh, seven squingers per squand, but Ancestrothesius, uh, oh, Lichtensteinii, uh, has, it looks like, three. Not so, a lot of swingers. Yeah, we're going to say that this guy, let's give him the average between three and five. There's five squingers per squand on this one. Okay, great. Uh, well, uh, with my five successes, I punch all five of those squingers, apparently. Uh, this is a really, like, weird alt-universe version of the scene from The Lion King. The squid is Mufasa clinging to the cliff, and you are Scar, finger by finger by finger. Sure. Well, here we go. I I am am a... (laughs) 
not gonna not gonna do it. Is this like oh. um uh, are you prying them off? Are you like are, or are we going like more like a, like a, a darker, grittier retelling where you're breaking the individual fingers? Like how? Oh. What, what level of aggression are you bringing to this? Oh no no no! Like so so part of part of the traits that I chose included brutal. Okay. and living weapon like i am trying really really hard to destroy every part of this swinger um this is a, this is a rip and tear situation oh absolutely yeah mm -hmm. like i i need these little suction cup things to get off the ship um but i am also <laughs> relishing in getting to punch a sky squid because i mean you gotta because you gotta when's the next chance you're gonna get to punch a sky squid i know you'd think after all these years working with mm -hmm. uriah i would have but no well, gang, um, that is two uh, normal successes, two slightly better successes, and one not quite a success. So as the math kind of comes to average out, we'll put you on plus one to escaping the squid. Uh, I will say once you have solved each of the three problems and you end up at plus three total, we will say that you have escaped. So, with the understanding that this show would be terribly, terribly boring if you all just did the same thing over and over again, and you have an obligation to entertain the audience, and also, Cyrus, you see in front of you, through the viewport on the turret, Naomi ripping shit apart, uh, you, both of you and Snargle from your position saw a fireball go flying off at the top of the ship, and as people who know the ship inside and out, you know it doesn't have a fucking fireball launcher on it. Well, it didn't until you brought Blackboard on board and kale you finally have the engine under control having you know clamped down on the loose bits tell me what happens now um <clears throat> i think as i see uh a fireball going out and then i see nathaniel on the roof of the yowl um i uh, curse myself and then i said shit fucking damn it and then I uh, go away from the <clears throat> gun. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> from the gun on top of the owl. Uh, and I will, because the one tendril is only stuck with a few pieces uh, of tendons left, I will take out my handy dandy pistols. I say true because two pistols are better than one, uh, mm -hmm. known fact. Um, and I will go out after Nathaniel to uh, hop into the same vent um, or a hatchet above. And uh, I don't want Nathaniel to fall out, so I will uh, wrap myself around them <laughs> and shoot the few tens that are left from a very romantic angle. Uh, uh, romance quite crowded. This hatch isn't that big, so that um, is not a problem. We can squeeze it in. We Nathaniel, can just manage. Is that um, a lesser noble in your pocket, or are you just happy to be here? Well, <laughs> well that would be telling. <clears throat> Very well, uh, Mister Vance. I'm sorry, Captain Vance. If you will put together uh, a little bit of pistol shooty roll for me. In the meantime, uh, Snargle, Naomi, Tristan, Kale. Anything on the table? Um, I know people are on the roof at this point, so I'm not going to pull off a crazy flying maneuver um, and see them get knocked off or anything like that. But I do love the idea, like now that the squid has taken this fireball to the face, it's probably loosening its grip a little bit. I want to use that opening to fly forward uh, past its mouth and make its arms stretch in the other direction. And when the arms are behind the ship at this point, I want to use the afterburners to kind of start searing uh, its its arms. Ooh, hold that thought, because you're going to have to yell into your intercom back to the engine room. What kind of order slash request are you making? Hey, uh, Kale. This, mm -hmm. this comes over the, the intercom, and I'm. you can tell my, my little goblin brain is stressed because we're, we're about to get eaten, and I'm like, I, I don't want to be in front of the mouth anymore. I'm gonna, gonna bring it forward. I was thinking about making calamari with the, uh, the afterburners. How, how's okay. that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. I'm on okay. it. Thank you. Uh, uh, like uh, limp my way over with my <laughs> my very burnt my burnt self to flick on all the afterburners at Snuggles' request. What is your secret sauce um, in the real world? The way an afterburner works is the engine, the jet engine is is, is going uh, and they just literally dump raw jet fuel into the exhaust stream, which creates the large cones of fire. So you, after 
literally after burn burn more fuel what is the special sauce of Ooh. steampunk fuel and home brewed what do you put you open up the hatch that leads to behind the engines and you empty something in it what's Ooh. in there oh that's a good question and one i did not think about ah oh. If you need a second, I will come back to you. Uh, there's plenty of other fun going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come back to me. I'll have a think. Okay. So Tristan and Naomi. Naomi um, will wait on the results of some of this stuff, but you notice the way that uh, Snargle is trying to drive. You get this. This You can see the thing stretch. And, uh... and Tristan, if you can concentrate in a moment like this. Uh, another fireball would be a risk given your proximity to Captain Vance, but wrong. fuck you, man. Fuck, well, I, I'm not a sorcerer. You do you. Very much depends. <clears throat> um, I mean, it's also the case where my my good friend Naomi is there too, and I really, you know, she's got very nice eyebrows. It's it's something that very pe- few people kind of manage, you know. But but she does, and I appreciate that about her. So I'd like to keep fire out of her vicinity, mm-hmm. also because she might punch me. Um, so I am instead going to um, lace my fingers in with uh, Cyrus's hand that has found its way around my abdomen. Um, and sort of use uh, her body weight to sort of anchor me in position, um, raise my hand to the sky and just um, feel the ozone begin to trickle down my fingers and that smell of something building um, hits both of our noses. And then I'm gonna just bring a lightning bolt down um, atop this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna cause it maximum stress. I'm here for this, uh, right. so go ahead and put your pool together. Kayla, have you got it figured out? Yeah, um, I think that's actually quite funny because I was um, uh, while Kale brings down, uh, well, Kale opens up the the afterburner to pour in what we used to to cause this afterburn. The image I had in mind was, you know, the airship from stardust that catches the lightning bolts i think that's what we use for afterburn i think we use like full-on raw electricity and there's like lightning yeah so as uh blackbird is outside calling down this lightning bolt to strike the uh the sky squid there is like a crackle of electricity from inside that starts like shaking around the afterburner and i'll send a message up to snargle going like it's ready when you are please just take it ah you got it, and I'm going to, uh, this isn't a quick maneuver. Uh, if I were given the chance, I would have, like, spiraled out of here and corkscrewed away, but, again, the danger of knocking my friends off. So this is a steady, like, everyone's aware of the ship moving as I pull forward and begin to angle it and, uh, hit it now! And I am going to roll my dice. <laughs> Fingers crossed. The tension is unbearable. How does six successes sound? That is excellent. Uh, that will make up in many ways for Tristan's um, lack of sorcery skill. You're distracted. I wonder why. Wow. <laughs> but, I mean, different. Uh, if you went for electricity, you should have gone for chemistry, obviously. Clearly. Oversight on my part, that one. But also, Kale, can we have the engine roll? Yes, How of much course. extra thrust are you giving to the situation? Uh, let me pick out me dice real quick. Um, Question: I'm... How much extra thrust are Cyrus and Nathaniel oh, contributing, and does that help at all? Uh... I was going to say uh, I will take this moment to say that I also, as I have done before, <laughs> hit my key of hidden longing with this uh, mm. very smooth so move. There's... Nothing hidden about mm. it, considering how close your bodies are squeezed together. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, it's actually kind of incredible that we managed to do this, but it's quite comfortable, so I'm okay with it. That would be uh, a further four successes. So, if you get a wonderful view, the two of you, if you can stop looking at the long and see what's going on, because out of the back of the engine on each side, just spears of lightning kaboom out the back. You get that big thunderous crack, that kind of like breaking the sound barrier noise of lightning that close to you. Not that lightning breaks the sound barrier. Please, physics people, do not at me. I understand. <laughs> Snargle using this maneuver to 
duck left under above whatever the motions did not match the actual directions but you're getting past the squid and it's starting to stretch out which means naomi in this moment in this moment of moments if you can do enough violence to sever come on you have to be able to right i mean god i hope so if i may real quick i would like to also use my secret of the lucky break on that roll which is once per session you can keep all your pool dice when you succeed take them all back all right naomi would you like to explain the face you're making to our audience <clears throat> um i have rolled eight successes eight successes on 12 dice the mathematical aunt are incredible which means as this summation of team effort all comes to bear Snargle expertly maneuvering the craft using the full power available to them based on Kale's bottle in a lightning afterburners. Cyrus and Tristan have worked their magic, both gunnery and interpersonal and literal, to do as much damage as much time to the squid. And in the moment where it counts, in the moment where the squid might be able to hang on and do something terrible, Naomi doesn't rip a squinger off. She doesn't rip a squand off. She rips the whole fucking tentacle apart just severing meaty chunks of calamari from meaty chunks of calamari the animal screaming in pain and protest but this is a small problem because now the ship is accelerating much much faster than you thought it was and from your position on top of course you're going to fall down it's going so fast which means in the moment where cyrus and Tristan, and they look at each other, and they lock eyes, and they're like, this is gonna be the perfect romantic moment of triumph. And then all of a sudden, Naomi comes down, down, bonking off the back, and collides, and now there's three of you wrapped up in the hatch. Hi, Naomi. I would like to pause this moment right now. It's been about an hour and a half of our way through the game. You've defeated the Sky Squid. Why don't we take a break, and when we come back, we will see how Naomi uh, interprets the situation that she finds herself in. Day. When we shared this story, we invite others to understand who we are in the universal grammar of the human soul. You're listening to the All Night Society, an actual play podcast by Queen's Court Games. At their best, my younger days were spent excelling in everything and at their worst i spent a lot of time suffocating under the weight of inferiority it takes a special kind of person to read between the lines of code and instantly perceive what those random strings of letters and numbers actually mean look i wanted to be a cop as long as i can remember I wanted to be the one kicking down doors and yelling, everyone, hands in the air. I cannot imagine an eternity squandered on so vain an effort. We are not immaculate. Our humanity lives within our flaws. I don't remember dying, but I do remember undying. That feeling of being pulled back from the empty void. How it takes you a few seconds to realize that you're not breathing. Alfred is committing quite the sin, wasting your talents like this, she'd offer. This was the most seen I'd felt in... ever. This was monstrous. I was the monster. And were it not for the beast's intense fear of the sun, I might have simply waited for it to rise and claim me. This wasn't graduate school anymore. This was war. Suffice it to say, that necessitated a change in curriculum. I remember her sighing and saying, you're in trouble, Scarlet, and I just laughed and said, no shit. Was he murdering his betrayer? Was his betrayer murdering him? I couldn't say, but I knew better than to walk in after him. I'm making eye contact with him and his, his fear rattled my core. Put simply, Sheriff, you're in Chicago to deal with the kindred monsters. I'm here to deal with the other kind.
They are the angels, brought and held together as children by their status as outcasts and freaks. Imaginative and tormented, Thomas has suffered greatly under the care of his foster family. How far would you go for release, for salvation? Goth culture was the perfect escape for young, rebellious Gabrielle. Now she's traded her innocence for alcohol, tattoos, and an abusive ex. Michael couldn't fight his way out of that basement, and he's been doubling down on violence ever since. When being strong isn't enough, where else do you go? Teenaged Harlow leaned hard into the outcast persona, using her hair as a mood ring. Now she's buried trauma, and with it, the capacity to love and trust. Ralph wasn't always a conspiracy-obsessed, deep-web denizen. What happened that turned a fantasy-loving book nerd into something much, much worse? Will these bonds hold true when they're reunited for sinister purpose in adulthood? Find out in His Last Hope, a story of lost friendships and childhood traumas for cult divinity lost. We return. We are refreshed. I mean, I am. I don't want to speak for everybody, but people look all right. Uh, I think I see. Yep, yeah, there's a smile from Cyrus. There's a smile from Tristan. There's a smile from Naomi, which means they have not forgotten in the time we were on break the conundrum that we left them in. Snargle, you are triumphant. You have secured the owl from the clutches of the squans. Cruising along now to Saber Skies. Kale engine is humming, purring nicely. Actually, if it's purring, that might be a problem. Check for cats, but humming, humming's okay. We've managed to make sure that nothing bad happened in the back of the boat, at least the parts that you are responsible for. Because if you happened to decide to look up into the hatch, you would see that you have acquired an additional body. Two, in fact, more than you remember sending up there in the first place. I do have a special goblin question. Mm -hmm. Were we able to uh, secure any of the tentacles? Uh, are oh, they still attached? There's, there's definitely some that got ripped off and are still stuck. Yeah, no. Dude, your aerodynamics are spoiled, but um, there's one that's like flapping behind the engine. So you're just leaving like a cool trail of calamari smell everywhere you go. No, that's amazing. Because if we pull in the goblin port with giant squid tentacles, we're gonna be the most popular people there. We are gonna get so many discounts. There's gonna be everyone's gonna want a piece of this. Folk of the town. Ne neighborhood Squarbecue. <laughs> exactly. So that is where we pick things up. How's it going? Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of kind of tight in here. Uh, so I think uh, as now when we kind of bumbles into us, I'll uh, take that as uh, my cue to. <clears throat> Maybe a lower as down. I don't appreciate the word bumbling <laughs> to explain, to describe. I'm sorry. Do you, would you I'm prefer jurgle? No, yeah. I would not. She prefer jurgled right jurgle, into you. That's can I, no. as well, the person running okay. the game, I'm going to put it on the canon notebook. Yeah. No, Naomi definitely you jurgled, jurgled right into, into us. Yeah. Fine. Fine. I jurgled into you. I hope I didn't interrupt any jurgling on the way. Mm, you did, but it's. I'm sure. It's all right. Still need the textbook definition for this juggling. I'm, I'm still very distressed that we haven't come up with a standardized definition for no, it. The ambiguity is what makes me. it fun. It's going to haunt me. Okay. okay. Right. Um, Besides, we'll just on have a ship, to look up the Urban a, Dictionary for Jurgle later. On a ship this size, there's no way you can, I mean, like the quarters are cramped. At this point, everyone on the ship has seen somebody else juggling at some point. Yes, even you, Kale. I, I was minding my own business, being injured down here. <laughs> um, I will uh, make my way down and leave <clears throat> room for the other two to follow before uh, closing the hatch. Thank you. Before, Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, before uh, <clears throat> Lord Blackbird leaves, I just kind of give him an eye down, then back up, glancing down towards Cyrus, and then kind of close my eyes a little bit and say you remember where we're going right? I do. 
I know I was. D do you? Because yes. I'm not sure that you do. The way that you're making eyes here. I don't... Naomi, honest question here. Mm -hmm. Honest, serious question. Please don't laugh. I know it's stupid. If you ask me what jurgling is, this is not the time. No. And I will laugh. <laughs> That's We're all gonna fair. laugh. To be fair, I'm not sure anyone knows at this point. I'm pretty sure that they're just saying it to fuck with me. Anyway, how do you know if you're, you know, in love? How, how, how can, how do you tell? How do you tell? Because I don't know how, how that works. Um, um, <clears throat> how does that how do you quantify how you feel about one person when compared to another? It's just a gut feeling. You know, when you get like punched right in the gut and there's just like this feeling that kind of just spreads out, like radiating from where you got punched and it just kind of like goes out from there and just like fills your whole body like it's kind of like that only it's a positive thing not a negative thing and it usually starts from like somewhere in this general area mm. i mean generally i've only experienced punching as a very unpleasant thing no but like but but, but, but not punching but like like the feeling of being punched but like but like spin it positive right so it's like it, uh, it's like a whole body thing and it just it feels you know, kind of really wrong, but also you don't want it to stop ever, and it frustrates you. Um, no, I, you actually, I'm gonna. Uh, no, I'm. I'm. I'm, 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 I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop you. I'm gonna stop you because it shouldn't feel wrong. And if it feels wrong, maybe it is. Maybe it feels wrong because it is wrong. So that's the problem, isn't it? Is I don't know if it feels wrong, and and I don't even know where we left it. We we me and Uriah, we we left it with me being tackled to the floor by my parents' guard as he jumped through a window. He left me. I, I'm i trying not to be upset about the fact that he left me. The fact that I ended up in a prison cell for weeks and he never came. You I'm know, trying not to be upset know, about that. <clears throat> you weren't the only one who was hurt in that whole exchange, Nathaniel. Okay? Uriah? has been tended to in that entire time due to the injuries that he sustained. This is not just about you. And I'm sorry that he left you. I am. But you know why I'm here? Because of him, because of what he feels for you. I wouldn't be doing this if he hadn't told me to. I'm here to protect you because he believes in you, because he trusts you. Did he, what did he tell you about me? Does he, does he miss me at all? I kind of glance down and then glance up. He told me a bit. <clears throat> oh, um, right. That was some of that, yes. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. And that little, um, that little birthmark mm -hmm. that you have, um, yeah. yeah, said it was, very cute. Very cute. I mean, he argued it was castle shaped. I kind of disagree, but well, I, you know, semantics at that point. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. But, um, I don't know. He, look, like I said, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Like, not, not just like physically here because of things he's done in the past, but like here for you. Like I'm here to bring you to him yeah. because you need my help. He knew you were probably going to need it. And he'd be here if he could, but he's still recovering. I I know you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm doing that thing again where it's not just about me anymore. 
You're right. You're right. Just... Someone like her comes along and I see everything that I want to be, in a way, I guess. She's... She's the epitome of just living your life without fear of restriction and even when those restrictions come along you cast them aside because you're so much you that anyone trying to tell you otherwise can get fucked and it's i don't know how i actually feel about either of them and i'm hoping that will become clear but i need you to know that whatever i feel for cyrus it absolutely does not negate any of the firestorm that Uriah lit in my soul. He, my feelings about him are complex. They are complex. And I will not deny that I have some stern words for the man, but I also have tender ones and, and impassioned ones and angry and sad and her miserable and everything. And there's just so much when you haven't let yourself feel for 22 years, there's so much suddenly to contend with. and. I need you, and I need you, and I need him. <clears throat> I'm sorry, this isn't coming across well at all. I I lean over and just kind of rest a hand on his shoulder. No, I I get it. It's a lot, especially for um <clears throat> someone who's uh can we call you emotionally stunted? Is that, no, absolutely. Is that yes. okay? Great. No, yes, yes. Um, but just, just keep in the back of your mind whether or not you love Cyrus or you love the idea of Cyrus and which of those things is affecting your judgment. Right. That, that makes sense. That does. All right. Okay. okay. We should probably um, <clears throat> go we back probably, yes. down. Yeah, oh, this is, um, um, it's a little sorry, cramped way, in here. Got, yeah, got this entire time, your... um, <laughs> Captain, like, went down, uh, made a gesture to the crew to act like they're busy, and then just kept listening in. <laughs> Um, and once they're like, they're like, yeah, we should, we should head down. Um, Captain sort of like goes around the corner, uh, and as they go down, uh, she acts as if she just ran at the corner to go and check up on them and, uh, kind of pulls, puts out a hand to help, uh, Nathaniel and thereby Naomi after them. Uh, as down. I <laughs> as as I see Cyrus's hand come up, I just take a little piece of squinger off and just like plop it down into their hand, as if as if Cyrus is gesturing to take the squinger off my shoulder. Uh, yeah, they keep it in one hand and then extend the other. Uh, here, let me help. Uh, and they kind of nonchalantly toss with the squinger, uh, as if they just got a a, a prize. I like this, but I want to rewind for a second because while I believe that Cyrus could keep her uh, their shit together that entire time, there is no way that Kale and Snargle are not communicating through like from the engine to the thing, either about this or the situation in general. So when when Cyrus says, "Hey, hey, yeah, just look busy, so I can you know eavesdrop romantically." <laughs> Kale, I, you, you roll your eyes, do you immediately begin, but no matter how that starts, like, you're, you're gonna pick up the snarl phone and well, be like, you gotta fucking, you wanna gotta believe this. Well, I'm re I'm really hurt right now, right? I'm injured right now, aren't I? Uh, it's not, you, you have like, like a, a burn, but it's not, it's not, yeah. you're not like- Okay, um, so it's not like, not, okay, I just wanted yeah. to, to, but yeah, I mean like, Kale, Kale will do whatever Cyrus says, tell, tells them to do. So yeah, I will do that and I will, I will look busy, but I will kind of be, as as Cyrus is eavesdropping on Naomi and Nathaniel, Kale is eavesdropping on Cyrus and is kind of watching, watching her, watching them, and I think yeah, we'll be kind of keeping even if they don't quite understand what's fully like what's fully going on, he'll be keeping Snuggle updated as like there's something going on here. 
It's got a little Timon and Pumbaa vibe. I can see what's happening. <laughs> I um, don't have a clue. How has this game just devolved into Lion King? First, I'm. It's in my head. head. It's in my now, head, and now it's it's, um, it's like pareidolia. You know, you see it once, mm-hmm. now you see it everywhere. Sure, yeah. Um, I would have probably justified my eavesdropping by saying that uh, we shouldn't let our two uh, guests or to uh, companions uh, alone for too long because we don't quite know them and they've already kept secrets from us. Um, So it's wise to keep an eye out. Captain, whatever you say. Do you buy that for one minute? No. Did, did, did she say anything about me? Are they talking about me in there? Is this, this I, I a conversation about love, I, right? I, I, it's like, I don't know what it's a conversation about, Snuggle. It's like, it's weird. Everyone seems very intense. I don't understand it. Okay. Um, she wants me. Yeah. Right. This is a... I think it, I don't... I read this in um in an anthropology book once, and I don't know if it's true. Anthropology has a, a very... Uh, checkered history when it comes to things you find in older books but i read that offering a goblin um a, a piece of squinger is uh, is a sign of affection in goblin culture <laughs> oh uh, okay um mm-hmm. when young no when young good. goblins get together for the you know with the you know little, little goblins uh goblin boys and goblin girls goblin girls and goblin girls you know whatever um that's that's how you you start that's that's when you mark the transition if you're not clear that you're flirting with someone you're like well it's being nice because of my friend when the, when the squinger comes out that's that's how you know it's real. That honestly oh, sounds like does, a far better system. Wait, does Snargle see me give a piece of Squinger to Cyrus then? Oh, certainly not. No. I okay. Mean, okay. Snargle's God, up, I would, up I would, on the mm-hmm. bridge. Okay. I would hate to break Snargle's heart that way. The the thing is, giant sky squid are so hard to hunt mm. that uh, giving someone some Squinger is just the apex of yeah. affection. Mm hmm. Like uh, more so because yeah. goblins aren't aren't known for heading out to fight them. So normally it's like it, you know it's this, this squinger that my grandpa gave my grandma, or I went to the store and had to like you know give a week's worth of bug jam for a squinger. Um, so a, a big fresh squinger, and really the bigger the, the, the you want a statement squinger, right? You want to so you want some. Matter. Yeah, well, you want to put that thing out and just have it like on the table, right? right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, at that point, yeah. I mean, you're you're looking at three months worth of of jelly, easy. Yeah. I'm, I'm for a for a worthwhile swinger. I'm just saying, we have these. Uh, you might see them as just like swinger meat flapping in the wind as we're going, but <laughs> the goblins are gonna give us like their an arm and a leg for what we've got here. A whole squad. <laughs> Wait, baby. they're their arms and legs oh hopefully not okay (laughs) uh, it's a figure of speech okay i'm i don't i don't know goblin culture so i just i had to ask Mm -hmm. yeah that that makes sense oh yeah well i will i will ask uh as the the ship traverses uh we'll say at this point you have uh, six to eight hours before we're going to make it to the hard goodbye um, I have seen Snargle and Naomi interact. I have seen Cyrus and Nathaniel interact. So let's mix that up a little bit um, and get us some scenes that will carry us towards this goblin paradise. Nathaniel, this is your first time out in the wild blue, yeah? Yeah, very much so. Snargle probably has some things to say about it if you wanted to hang out on the bridge while Cyrus, no doubt. I mean, Rome, the heart needs, but the ship must. So spending some time with Kale, getting to the bottom of this, and then Naomi, uh, you can insert yourself wherever you think it would be most entertaining to do so. Why don't we set that up and see what comes of it? So I think um, after that conversation with Naomi. Uh, my head is somewhat spinning. Um, a lot to think about. And seeing that conversation and immediately turning to see Cyrus hand outstretched, ready to be chivalrous. Um, well, for some reason, um, it does not help the complexities of the whirling. Um, so I, I very gingerly take the hand and then um, make haste to retreat without making eye contact. Um, and I, I think I have maybe slipped into the bridge, um, not totally 
totally not avoiding her totally not avoiding her and avoiding um confronting my feelings at all because that would be ridiculous and I am a very well balanced adult um so I I slip into the bridge uh close the door behind me um and I, I have the the sort of last quarter of the jelly sandwich in my hand um and I just sort of bring it up to snuggle and put it down um a little little too much for you a little I was just honestly thinking about what you said earlier um should they hatch is that I mean do we feed them is that what what do you what do jam bugs eat is what it's a kind of a pest and they will eat through the hull so it's best not to let that happen i mean like it's not like uh um real bad things will happen if they eat through the hole but uh, given time they will reproduce and uh you don't want to fly around and rake the tomatoes with cheese right or metal cheese or metal. swiss metal yes um that that's probably fair i just figured i'd you know um prepare in case i was about to become a pet owner of several thousand tiny things um I, I did want to have a quick catch up though. Um, okay. you, you you mentioned uh, that this is a goblin island that we're going to, you, you, uh, like a goblin port, right? Yeah, yeah, it's where uh, we we kind of hang out, uh, hide from the empire a little bit because th- they don't seem to like us for some reason. Don't know why. Maybe uh, maybe they don't like color changing people. I'm going to be totally honest here. Um, as someone who very recently become became someone the Empire does not like, um, the rules are myriad and complex and change often. Um, ah. So don't put too much stock in it. Um, well, funny thing about goblins, we are myriad and complex and we change often. So that's uh, an interesting thing. <laughs> yes. Um, totally. Got really heavy. We introduced colorism into this world, and we're like addressing it. That's no, it's fine. Like, okay, no, I'm here for this. Yeah, no, let's let's we we've done the dick jokes. Now let's tell a really hard hitting story. <laughs> um, speaking of well, um, culture. Um, I, I I was wondering if perhaps we could do a little bit of an exchange. Um, I don't want to offend anyone. I I truly it is not my intent. I I intend to go into this um this skyport to kind of trying to put my best foot forward. Um so if there are if there's any sort of cultural things you 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 think I should know um so that I don't offend anyone that'd be great. Um but I I am not coming to you empty handed. Um you mentioned whilst we were you know still in prison um that perhaps you'd like to know a bit more about magic. Um so Ooh. Bit of an exchange. I'm proposing, yeah. I guess. Uh I'll, I'll be honest, uh goblins don't technically we don't really have magicians. Uh, <laughs> uh no one well, someone might be able to do it, but I've I've never met them, right? Uh I think there's training that the Empire does that uh we're not really a part of. Uh yeah. I would like to try and learn. All right. Great. Um, well, um, would you like to go first or shall I? <laughs> oh, I, I can go first. Uh, we have a lot of really strange uh, customs <laughs> compared to what you humans do. Uh, a lot of like appreciation stuff. You gotta like spit in each other's hands when you make a deal. Um, uh, you know, uh, hugging, not really a thing. I notice humans do that a lot. Uh, we we also like, like to butt heads when we're angry. Oh. So uh, if if someone's being a real jerk to you, just smash your head into theirs, and uh, that should settle it. Um, they won't come come seek you out like a, a week from later and be like, "Hey, you butted my head." No, the the the, the problem at that point is settled. Right, right, like a duel. Except. yeah yeah um with no clear scheduling got it no one will uh take it to the grave i noticed that that your kind of people uh tend to hold them grudges for a really long time uh not something goblins really have that's refreshing i'm not going to lie that's good to know but we're also kind of uh cowardly we tend not to want to be in battle 
<laughs> most of my my flying maneuvers involve escaping rather than fighting. It's just a personal preference, I guess. I don't want to hurt anyone. I mean, from what I've seen, you're quite capable of both. Oh, okay. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to. Like, I, I, I adore uh, Naomi for her punching abilities, but I, I, I get a little squeamish when I see her punching actual people, but I still admire it. Well, you... One would be reticent not to, frankly. She is a true stutter when it comes to the, uh, well, art of stunning. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You, um... I don't know, would you would you like to get to know her a little better, maybe? <sighs> oh, yes. Yes, I would love that very much. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm not sure how to break it to her. I've never, I've never had this kind of feeling for uh, uh, one of your kind before. That's, um, that's understandable. Um, how do you go about that? Do you just, uh, <laughs> do you run up and you, like, lick her face? Does that let her know? Oh, Sweetie, I am entirely the wrong person to ask. The way I was taught to court is more along the lines of just sort of running a very slow military campaign against the other person until they wear down. And frankly, that's never been of interest to me. So I have absolutely no idea how to go about it outside of the palace. That's so much work. It really? Like, I mean, is. goblin courtship work in itself, like it's different though. You don't have to like make the other person feel bad. Right. Right? What? Hang on. You don't? It, no, no, you don't. Yeah, you kind of, you're just like, hey, I like you, and you eat all their food, and then you lick their cheek, and they're like, yeah. Right. 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 I like that method far better. Great. Okay. Um, well, um, thank you for that, Snuggle. Um, hold on a second, and I will pull out a leather-bound tome, um, sort of embossed with these these lovely sort of um fire rendered symbols and sort of flick it open to the middle page and it's a absolute cacophony of ink and scribbling and it's just beautiful elegant calligraphy and sort of geometric patterns um it's sort of trace my finger down them and i say so this is this is the sort of a basic elemental principle right um building blocks basically are there is a thing that exists in the world, and I would quite like it to be in a different place or look different. Thank you. Um, you want the world to look different? Yeah, it's 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 an odd one. It's all about force of will. Oh. Um, so I dare say you'll hack it in no time. Hmm. It's very much a case of believing your ability to take a situation that is not favorable to you and making it your own and that is really the crux of the matter um here uh, give me a sec um and he will kind of um i will i will flare my fingers briefly and sort of direct the the low sort of stagnant breeze in the cabin to sort of um whirl around my hands and then send it over to snuggles um and sort of make it make it weave around their fingers and just sort of say okay so uh very simple stuff just concentrate on the feeling of the, the sort of the wind in the fingertips you know and i i just want you to concentrate on making it go where you want it to go so for instance up we're going to try that for a bit i would love to see how that turns out and i want the tension to build to see whether or not snargle accomplishes it there's no answer in the book canonically as to whether or not goblins can do magic but i'm seriously doubting that snargle can manage on the first time so cannot wait to see what goes wrong in the cabin <laughs> in this beginning piece of uh, of instruction um which means there's a conversation happening in the back of the boat, perhaps also about magic, perhaps also about the right way to court someone. Um, Kale, you and the captain never did quite finish that conversation you were having about how you knew uh, the good Lord Blackbird. Uh, new information coming to the fore about their relationship and Naomi. Uh, you did not interject into the Snargle Nathaniel scene, which leads me to believe you also have words that you would like to share with the uh, the back-enders here. 
Yeah. Um, as I sort of get uh, um, left behind by Nathaniel, uh, who quickly scurries away, I will uh, make my way to the back, um, seemingly out of it for a moment. Uh, it's like uh, she's not really used to either this or this feeling. Um, who knows? Pulling on, like, fixing up bits of the engine that got shaken loose with, like, the afterburn and things like that. Um, you're, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it that obvious? <laughs> We've, um, how long have we known each other, Captain? The, quite some years now. Um, you shouldn't be doing all of that. You, uh, you're clearly burned, uh, um, injured. You. I've. It's fine. I've had a lot worse. Uh, yeah, you have, but that doesn't mean that you're not gonna still have a lot worse. So you should better <laughs> survive for that. I mean, this ship has uh, already brought us for so much. Mm. You think we're going to relive quite an adventure like this in the future? Oh, I've got no doubts about it. Just hope that get a bit of a break before then. Get to the mm. hub goodbye, restock, rebuild, and then, well kind of he kind of like pauses before he carries on like he's trying to find the right word it, cargo we have on board tends to attract attention so suppose we um going to be keeping light on our flight wings for a while i mean that's the exciting part isn't it Always. we're going to have quite the story to tell <laughs> after this not just the skies quit i mean everyone bumps <laughs> into that once they take on board an uh, airship i mean mm. we can say that they as people who are running away from the empire actually smuggled successfully hopefully mm. other people who ran away from the empire mm -hmm. it's not that uh. <laughs> difficult and i say as i come around the corner i'm holding <clears throat> excuse me i'm holding something that kind of looks like a muffler but then like has like a clear glass part in the center with like a it looks like a, like an edison like a tesla coil right uh and i just kind of like hold it up and i say is this important uh i mean oh it's a spevin gun valve oh. when it's sure. when it's attached yeah when it's off not really. Okay. And I'll we can we can do it. without it. We can do without it until we get to hug goodbye. Okay. Not much further after it, but we can get a new one. Cool. And I'll just toss it over my shoulder and it like lands. <laughs> it just like shatters. Yep. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um Cyrus looks uh down into that and then back up to Naomi and say that is not included in the fees that you're paying us, just so you know. That your eye is paying you. And you are the ones in here. Uh, you speak for him at this moment. So you, dear Naomi, you're paying. You're right. I do speak for Uriah. So right. It seems like that's baffling your mind right now. No, it's not baffling my mind. I just wasn't sure whether or not you knew that. So I'm glad that we're on the same page. Look, dear. Uriah is a pirate and he has a fine standing. But you are on my ship right now. So whoever you're speaking for, it doesn't matter if I throw you out into the air, if I would wish so. I'm not doing that. I'm a humble captain. I do what I promise to do. But just so you know, don't get don't let it get to your head right now. No, I'm not letting anything get to my head. I am just very, very happy that Uriah is in the forefront of your mind in regards to the safe transport of both me and Lord Blackbird. Forgive me if I'm mistaken. As far as I'm aware, our contract is to safely transport lord blackbird i've not heard anything about you well, you're right kill mm, 
Except I'm part of the deal. Are you? Where was it stated in the deal, though? Do we have have a contract, Captain? Nothing's true unless it's written down. Yeah. Hmm. I don't remember seeing a written contract. Sure. Do what you will. Do what you will, then. If you decide to transport Lord Blackbird and somehow I'm not there and your stories don't line up as to what happened to me, really, really, just, just consider the pirates. I'm just saying. Do you really think that the two of our stories won't line up? Oh, not yours. Yours and Lord Blackbird's. Kind of like look to look to Cyrus. Do you really think hers and Lord Blackbird's story won't line up? Yes. Oh, come on, you've seen it. Tell me you've not seen it. You've seen how good Nathaniel is at acting. And the way they look at each other. Mm, the way that she looks at him. Look, he that has her nothing to do with this. Sure. Can I that, that, that has nothing to do with this. Forgive uh, me, Captain. Well, I'll, kind of t- I'll turn back to... I'll kind of put my hands up. <laughs> what we were saying, Naomi, is that you shouldn't get cocky in this situation. Really, you shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Remember what ship you're on. It would tell one hell of a story if we were to throw you out into the air, maybe feed you to a sky squid. Just saying, I do a lot for a good story. No, and I get that. And that story can be yours. You can tell that story. Mm-hmm. And then I guess you'd kidnap Lord Blackbird and then have the whole pirate fleet on your ass. Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. No, no, no. We, we'd simply mm-hmm. come to Lord Blackbird and, and Uriah and tell him the tale of the tragic accident that befell his bodyguard. You see, she, she tried so hard to defend him and his honor from the, the sky squid, the dangers of these skies, that she just leaned a little too far over the edge of our ship. The sky squid that we already defeated, you mean? That one? You really think there's just one out there? Mm. Chances are we probably won't see another one if I had to wager a guess. Oh, you want to you want to put me up against that? <laughs> that hey, no. don't, Aaron. As this conversation is happening, do not oh, make, no. guys, do not make <laughs> me a liar, Aaron. You you bet you bet in woman, Naomi. Uh, yeah, I was a pit fighter for years. Of course, I'm a betting woman. It's I bet like on my a- life every time I stepped into the ring. Well, that's there's a slight difference between being bet on and mm-hmm. betting, but I, I take at, your last point. It's a sport. It's a sport mm-hmm. regardless. I fancy those odds. Now then, mm-hmm. I don't like it when people threaten my captain. Cease. I didn't threaten anybody. You're getting uh, remarkably as, close. Look, as, far, look. as far as I can tell, you two are the ones who are threatening me. Look. I am merely asking you to just keep in mind who is paying you to transport this cargo. That's all. Naomi, do you... What are you? Are you Nathaniel's bodyguard or are you Nathaniel's friend? Uh, I'm Uriah's friend. I'm Uriah's bodyguard. I have been given a duty to protect Nathaniel and bring Nathaniel to Uriah. So in that scenario, you're not being Nathaniel's friends. You don't want what's best for him. You want what's best for Uriah. How do you know they're not the same? Consider this me making assumptions. You're being paid by Uriah. You're Uriah's friend. You're doing what Uriah wants. So you're doing what is his his best interest. I mean, the two interests could align, of course, but from what I heard from Nathaniel when we were out and about, Mm -hmm. he -hmm. wants freedom. Mm -hmm. And you don't think that, like, I don't know, joining up with a pirate crew gives him that freedom? Joining up with a pirate crew under the assumption that he is the lover of the captain of them. Once he's not, he's nobody. Uh, and you think that Uriah would do all of this for somebody he didn't love? Would that pay not... all the money that he's paying for somebody he didn't love? Naomi, 
that's not what I'm questioning here. Mm. The moment Nathaniel decides that that is not what he wants. Are you what he wants? Nobody. Is that what you think? That you're what um, he wants? You're making quite the assumptions here. I'm just I haven't asking, even I'm mentioned asking myself where this is once. going. I'm asking where this is going. Oh, please. As you can't Kale, have a I'm conversation sorry, as Kale without said, knowing where it goes. As Kale said, I have seen how you two look at each other. I've seen how you look at him with those eyes of yours. Yes, I do have eyes. That is a very astute assumption, Naomi. Mm. And I understand that you can blame the captain for a lot of things, but as the old saying goes, it takes two to dock a skyship. That's disgusting. You should feel bad about that one. <laughs> I, I don't no. at all. No, you what, should. You what should. horror That's have gross. you pulled out of that? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. I, I legitimately do not understand the... If I have said something that is actually a reference to something that I do not understand, then oh, that's disgusting. Yes, no. that's why. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry Chad. Doing a I, um, I definitely, I definitely just said where my mind was in the Zoom chat. <laughs> that and is not so, what I meant at all. You that's are what filthy. You said, though that's what you said. So. No, V. I thought you understood <laughs> that. That's what you were going for, and that's why you said it. I was. I thought you were doing a bit just now. No, I was talking about. The, uh, <laughs> I, now I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> it's probably for the best. Would you prefer it takes two to slide tango? a skyship to into tango? port? To tango, we I can just. Still, why? No. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It takes two to tango. Okay. <laughs> look, it, look. As the saying goes, it takes two to jiggle. No, journaling can be done solo, Aaron. (laughs) You know that. Uh, Regardless, the point that I'm trying to make is you seem to be blaming the captain a great deal for behaviors that are encouraged at this point and accepted 100% by your dear friend, Mr. Lord Blackbird. Because as we have discussed, Lord Blackbird is emotionally stunted. He does not know what he wants. Right now... He wants freedom and adventure, but he and Uriah love each other. Do they? Hmm. Yeah. It's been how long? A month. (laughs) More than the number of days we've been on this ship that apparently means all the world to Cyrus. I mean, some things change. Mm. And love doesn't need a duration to set. Exactly. So yes, they love each other, Uriah and Lord Blackbird. Thank you for proving my point. One more question before you go running back off to your whatever he is to you. Mm -hmm. If he did care so much, Uriah, why hire us? Surely there are people far more suited to the job than... Us, who you clearly have so much disdain for. I don't have disdain for you. (laughs) No, just Cyrus. I mean, come on. If Uriah even had an ounce of the foresight that you, on his pedestal, have given him, surely you'd know better. Do you? Hmm. Snargle and Cyrus had no idea who Lord Blackbird was mm-hmm. when he set foot on this ship. Mm-hmm. Don't you think that maybe that's exactly why Uriah would hire you? But I knew. That's fine. Maybe he didn't know about you. Lack of foresight. Hmm. <laughs> would have thought better of him. Great <clears throat> pirate. Doesn't foresee it all. Not when it comes sweet. to his true love. It's it's impossible. I mean, there's always going to be somebody that knows who the Lord Blackford is. Three? Crew of three. And he can't even be bothered to fully research us. Huh. How is he supposed to know exactly who you know? It may have been enough that Snargle and the captain didn't. He just assumed that all of you are <clears throat> uninformed. Then he made assumptions when it comes to the protection of his one true love. Wise move, I'm sure. Mm. You seem to have fallen in silent, Naomi. Allow me to escort you back to the bridge, perhaps. Please, Aww. I've got work to do. 
I can find my own way. Thanks. It's my ship. You'll no, follow me. I don't. Mm. Oh, I'm not going to be here for this Mean Girls back and forth. <laughs> like, you can be escorted. That's fine. But I'm. The, it'll be the next 17 minutes of this show. Mm, no, I can go. Mm, no, I'm going to escort you. Mm, no, I can make my own way. Mm, no, but you can't. Oh, no, I've seen this show before. In fact, uh, I think the funny joke here is that you are walking in that direction, like Naomi starts to go, and she's like, mm, no, I can make my own way. And Cyrus is next to her, being like, mm, no, I'll escort you. And they have actually made it to the bridge at this point, where Snargle and Nathaniel, who I have not forgotten about, are uh, about to reach the magic point. So this is the case where they're, they're still doing it uh, as, as they come on to the bridge. The, mm, no, I can make it on my own. And or, uh, uh, Cyrus saying, mm, well, mm, we're here. And right about that moment, Snargle, how's the magic going? Well, um, I'm trying not to listen to the, the arguing behind me. If you even call it arguing, it's just kind of like talking around each other. Um, but I'm focused on the sensation of the wind moving about my fingers. And for some reason in my head, I've got this idea that in order to cast magic, you need to hold your breath. So I'm focusing hard and I'm holding my breath and I'm starting to turn a shade of blue and then a shade of purple as I'm just not breathing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. in through the nose, in, in through the nose, and out. In through the nose, <laughs> and out. It, you, you get the, like that hamster wheel in, in Snargle's brain. Uh, it it kind of like stalls a little bit as I, I try to shift gears from like focusing on the magic to actually like breathing and focusing on the magic, like chewing gum and walking at the same time. It's, <laughs> it takes, takes me a hot minute. Um, but eventually I start returning to a normal shade of green, um, still kind of focusing on the, the magic swirling between my fingers, but... Mm. First timer, probably not expecting much. I begin to blow, though. Maybe that'll help. Um, I I don't actually know. Do you have tags at all that are related to magic? Oh, I don't think so. Um, I don't even know if goblins can do magic in it, the way that magic works. Yeah. Made up. <laughs> the, whether... the only thing I can suggest is under goblins tag mm -hmm. specifically, I have something that says connections, and that's very like I I oh I think that means more like other goblins. Yeah, like uh like criminal networks. Like Joe. Well, then I will I will posit this question to Nathaniel. You probably didn't know at the time because it's canon that we're making up on the fly. But we can say now that you know that goblins probably can't do magic. Like maybe one in a trillion goblins. I mean, never say never. But you also know that you could make Snargle's entire fucking century, however long goblins live, no one knows, by just doing a little bit of your own magic with a little bit of subterfuge to make it seem like when Snargle gets that last little wind and the paper flutters up that they were the one who accomplished it. Does that sound like the kind of thing that Nathaniel would do? Um, so that thought occurs to me, um, and it's one of those horrible moments where sort of an intrusive thought pushes your, its way into your brain and you think about it for a whole second and then you realize you were considering it and you think, oh my gosh, no, and like shove it aside. Um, and I, I cringe slightly as I, as I realize that that insidious kind of deceptive, like must make everyone feel the way I want them to feel kind of thing is is rearing its ugly head again and I stamp it down immediately and the magic just it peters out um I just I take one of Snuggle's hands and I just say listen first time is always difficult okay it yeah. really really is and No matter what any dry old dusty tome or clinical archivist or arcane scholar may tell you, if you want something to happen and you work hard at it, bloody hell, why shouldn't you be able to move mountains? Keep at it. Okay. You know, I was thinking, maybe I can't do magic like you can, but 
unlike you, I can change my size. I can grow wings. I can grow claws. I can do a whole bunch of really neat things. Um, and after traveling with your kind for so long, I kind of feel as though I got the better deal. No offense, but <laughs> I could I could shoot fireballs like you, or I could just be me. Exactly. And, well, that's the best kind of magic, isn't it? I agree. But still, what you did earlier with the fireball that smacked into the squid, it was very cool. Oh, you should have seen the first time I tried to do anything with fire. I absolutely obliterated my entire dormitory. I took out three boys in the process. Three. And one of them came back within the month, and he was not happy with me, let me tell you that. <laughs> well... <laughs> That does sound fun, though. I'm. I'm gonna say I'm. I'm I do like a good explosion. Who doesn't? <laughs> this turned actually, honestly, got heartwarming. Um, <laughs> I have two questions that I would like to get the answer to before we before we start to kind of wrap up. Um, Cyrus, Naomi, this is the scene that you see as you walk up on, and you each have. I mean, I was gonna say feelings for Snargle or for Nathaniel, but really for both of them. Um, what does this moment mean to you or or bring out? Not all the way out, because, oh God, public emotions. Mm -mm, not on this boat. Uh, you were having a bit of a sour moment for, now you witness this. In like a minute or so, what, is that, what does that feel like to you? What do you take out of that exchange before you finally <clears throat> announce your presence and before Cyrus says, no, snarl to the helm, we're almost there, and so on and so forth? It's really, really sweet. Uh, I, I don't know what all is going through Nathaniel's head because it, you know, I, I caught that little moment where something obviously happened and, and he just kind of like, ugh. Um, obviously, <clears throat> Snargle didn't catch it because Snargle was way too focused on not breathing. But I noticed it and I get a little worried at first, um, because I, I have a feeling I know what's troubling <laughs> Lord Blackbird. But when they have this cute little exchange, it it's really nice. It's it's nice that Lord Blackbird has something to kind of like take his mind off of what's going on and kind of like give him a little bit of a break, but still kind of like keep him focused on things. And Snargle's just such a good soul. So it's it's nice that even though it didn't work out, the whole magic thing, uh, that, that Snargle's still really positive because seeing Snargle sad would just be the worst. The worst. The worst. What about you, Cyrus? I'm taking it all in for a moment, and I'm actually happy to see such a lighthearted moment take place. But on the other hand, as I see Snargle um, really try their best and uh, fail, but Nathaniel like kind of uh, boosting their their spirits and all of that and giving them actually really good advice, um, I uh, kind of look between Snargle and then to Naomi and I straighten my back a bit because seeing Snargle like this, remembering what they said before with them liking Naomi and stuff like that, it kind of brings up a defensive part in me, a defensive part that right at this moment is saying that Naomi doesn't deserve Snargle. Um, with them being like this and with them being my crewmate, with Naomi having voiced her, her displeasure in all of her ways. Um, so I think with that thought in my mind, I will kind of... Um, break up the moment as it ends uh, and and let Snargle take your place in the ship. And then in the uh, steaming hot engine room, no doubt the well, temperature's risen a little bit, actually, since last we were there. Mr. Arkham, mm -hmm. you have taken very quickly to a certain mood about the situation. Mm. Why is that? I think... Kind of as Naomi and Cyrus leave, um, my mind is on like 
it's I'm thinking back to the the time that that me and, and Cyrus first met and the kindness they showed me, the the camaraderie, the the kinship that we share and everything that I that I owe her. Um and kind of seeing someone speak to her like that just in enrages me. She's done so much for me and has given me so much, has saved me from so much. And I want to see her like happy and doing what is best for her and knowing that there's something not quite right. And then having someone speak to her that way on her own ship just enrages me. And I'm in the engine room kind of by myself doing the repairs on on the engine like tightening things that were loosened by the afterburn and taking out the bits that we no longer need marking down what needs to be replaced when we get to the hard hard goodbye a, a little more aggressively than i think we need to um just mind awash with all of with just kind of thinking as to how much i dislike how she was treated and how i didn't do anything really about it well i'm sure you will have time to make up for that sorry the cat is climbing up out of my lap but it's a little uncomfortable oh dope. there you go yep see it uh she's done with me uh which is a little bit fortuitous timing we are coming up on the end of our time with the audience but as i was saying plenty of time to revisit those feelings mr arkham or to smush them down they will never be spoken of again because as these thoughts arise as these moments end up across the horizon you see the teetering unstable mess of a of a goblin ecumenopolis there's an island and then just every single part of it is covered in, in jutting buildings coming out at weird angles there is no building code anywhere close to this even gravity seems to not quite apply the way that these things sag and twist over one another no safety rails anywhere it's it, if you're a kind of neat and orderly person or a civil engineer, uh, the, the entire thing makes you very uncomfortable. But save from the danger that walking through this place would cause, save for the miracles of goblin construction and architecture technique, the thing that stands out to you are in purple letters, the word the stretched out on large painted, uh, clumsily painted scrap boards, then hanging down below that in individual letters h a r d made from scraps of of ship and then that one you're pretty sure is like a tapestry of some kind and then a long long chain too long they could have shortened it they didn't and then goodbye stretching down so far that the last few letters flirt with the purpley soup of the toxic beneath and you have arrived at your destination, a port full of goblins and also criminals, mischief, maybe fuel, and God willing, a way to and through the remnants. But the people that we will meet, the things we'll have to juggle. All of that is going to have to wait until next week. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, my friends. I am Aaron. I've been your storyteller. We are Queen's Court Games. I have been so thrilled to be joined by, uh, on my uh, wonderful crew of fools, as our goblin pilot with a heart of gold and magical dreams, performing as Snargle Zoe. Thanks all for watching quick-tempered mechanic with a secret about Lord Blackbird that I am desperate to hear next time. Kale Arkham, thank you so much, Rowan. Catch you next week. Oh, Captain, my Captain. No, Lord Blackbird's Captain. Searing's here is Cyrus Vance. Yeah, I'm gonna go eat ice cream and cry right now. Other people who might be crying based on the emotional outcome of the story as Lord Nathaniel Blackbird. Gabe, as always, a pleasure. Thank you for letting me play out some more hardcore sad boy hours. <laughs> and legitimately ready to fucking end someone like they're a squid wrapped around her ship. 
<laughs> Naomi played by V. <laughs> yes, absolutely. 100% accurate read on the situation. Good job. Once again, we are Queen's Court Games, this big, happy, wonderful family of, uh, of, of people. Sarah, it's always nice to have you here. You can catch the old Lady Blackbird episode from last week on your podcast. We will be back here next week with this same episode. But until then, you, you be careful with your sky hearts, ladies and gentlemen, because you have just seen what can go wrong if you don't guard those emotions from the pirates in your life. We will see you all next week. Until then, bye. Bye. Bye.